UI path changed from something called classic to the modern design experience. To check if you have it, go to activities, go down to UI automation and in application, make sure you have these ones, then you are under modern. If you don't have them, then you can either go to project, go up here to settings and make sure the modern design experience is ticked. If that is the case, or if it's not the case, and you want to make sure it's done through each project, I can click settings, and I can click design. And here you'll see use modern for new projects. Yes, you should always use modern unless your company don't want you to use it. That's because it's a lot better. Let me show you how. Let's first find an application that we can use to automate. So go down to start, search for a calculator, and open that one. This mimics a lot of more advanced apps, in fact, almost any. So this is a nice app for testing. You all have it at your computer. First, we will use a classic click. Make sure you have it. So um, go to activities, go over here to this one here, and choose show, show classic. Then let me collapse this, and let's go down to classic. Here you will go into classic UI automation, then you'll find the element, you'll go down to mouse and we'll find a click. So now we can just indicate uh, this button that we want to click, we can pick the number four. Now, uh, the classic activity generated two things. It created an informative screenshot and a selector. To see the selector, we can, for example, click these three ribbons, click edit the selector, and it's here. Then an RPA developer would need to open up the UI Explorer to edit the selector if we want it. Here we can use wildcards, variables or arguments. And what this selector actually says, it simply just say that the app, that is the Windows calculator, the title of the app that is calculator, you can see it, it's up here. Then we are uh, going down the number pad and we have the num for button, which is a button. So this is the address of this button. The challenges with creating selectors with the classic experience here is that if we face problems here and we need to add an anchor or an image, then we will need to use separate activities like the anchor base or find image. And once this automation, let's assume that it's a longer automation, say 200 activities, is published to Orchestrator as a NuGet package, this selector is embedded in the activity. This means that mod modifying the selector means redeployment of your code. And redeployment, by the way, means retesting. So um, earlier I had to redeploy the code just to change one activity, but with the modern, this has became great. So let me just click OK here, and I'll just comment this out. Either right click, disable activity, or control D. Let's look at the modern design experience. So let me just collapse this and collapse the classic as well. We can use an activity just for clicking. We'll need to define the scope, and that is we use the use application browser, this container here. So if I drag this one in here, here I'll need to indicate the application that I want to automate. And then all my activities within that application or browser will go into the do container. So click the indicate application to automate. Mine is the actual calculator. Here you can see that UiPath automatically created the application path. We can use a variable or another absolute path. Now I want to do the clicking. So I go up here and I search for a click. Make sure you don't pick the classic ones. If you want those ones to go away again, which I recommend, it, you can just go up here and trigger this show classic away. Now we know we have the right click. So I drag it in. Indicate an app and I'll just pick number four, for example. Here you can see that UiPath has created a lot of selectors. This is what's called a descriptor. We have the strict selector, and this is the same thing that we get in the classic activities, and this does not require, require an anchor. 
We also have the fuzzy selector. This method returns multiple elements with attributes that are similar to those found in the fuzzy selector and the degree of similarity, that one is down here, can be adjusted. You can just slide this all the way to zero or all the way to one. If we slide it all the way to one, this means that this will be very strict. It will not find a lot of elements. If we slide it to uh, all the way to zero, it means that this will find um, all the elements, but it will be find a lot of random elements as well. So a nice path in between is 0 0.5. We also have the image one here. And again, this one will find image that looks like this. And we can see that it's actually the four here. And again, the degree of similarity can be adjusted down here. Default is 0 0.8. But you if you do like this, they will find more elements. And if you do like this, it will be very strict. So let's just pick it to 0 0.0. And again, imagine that we have multiple elements of these, then this activity might require a um, an anchor. So let's go through them and inspect them a bit more. If we go up here to the strict selector, the two blue circles, that one is this one here, that is means that this is the first first method to correctly identify the element. The blue hexagon, that is this one, this will just open up the UI Explorer. And here, if I click it, it will, it will take some seconds. And here it will open up the existing selector. I can now choose to add things to the selector if I want it. Let me just click cancel. That is not what we want to do. Now, we have the copy here. I can copy out the selector to, for example, a notepad if I want to use it there. The eye that shows where the elements are on the screen. Here you can see that I have now clicked it and it turned yellow over here. The fuzzy selector, that one is almost the same. And here you can see that we identified that our case is four down here with the accuracy of 0 0.5. If I go down to image, I can see that um, we are using uh, this number four. I can choose to refresh it if this thing has changed and I needed a new image. I just click this refresh here. Again, I can click this eye to inspect where it is. So again, this image accuracy, we already went through that. Like in the classic experience, I can always validate. I can do it up here with this button. This will validate this one here. Now let's try to change this a bit to see if uh, we're able to make sure that the validation doesn't work. So let me just have a two here and add a two here. Now, if I click validate, you can see that this one has a sign that's red sign. This means that we can't find anything uh, using this selector. Of course, we changed uh, a lot of things to on purpose, make it unstable. So I'll make sure that Oh, sorry, it looks like this before. We can also add anchors. And for example, let me say that I wanted to pick this equal sign instead, I can uh, remove what I've chosen by just clicking this delete target that will make me able to repick. So here I'll pick the equal sign. And let me say that this was unstable. This has might have become red instead of green green means that it's easy to find. So let's pretend that um, this is unstable. Then I can simply just add an anchor by hovering your mouse over, click the anchor, and I'll choose something stable right next to it. That could be the plus sign. So now I'd make it more stable. I can add uh, another anchor that could be this dot here. I can add up to three anchors to make the actual selector more stable. This is fine for now. We will just click confirm. And now let me comment this one out again. So what I'll do now is that I'll show you the keyboard shortcuts in the modern design experience. So here I'll find the keyboard shortcuts and drag it in. Here I can choose a target application if I want it if it's inside a use application uh, slash browser, or I can simply just click record here. And then I can whatever wherever I am, I can just press for example, control C, 
and you can see that this key combination got down here. I can choose to add another record, uh, record another shortcut. Let's say that I'm purposely doing an error here, Control Q, for example. Now you can see I'm not satisfied with this. Then I can just um, move it away. Let's pretend I want to also Control V like this. And I also want to mark everything in the start. So what I do here is to record another shortcut, Control A, and then I can simply just move these around as I like. Submenus is another thing. So if I go in here, let's say that I want to use this submenu, and then I want to, for example, click this absolute value sign. So what you will do here, and let me just delete this keyboard shortcut here, and use an use application browser of course we could have used this one that we commented out here but let's just practice a bit more so here we choose the application and now i want to be able to first click the function so i'll find a click and this one will go into the do container here i'll click indicate an app and i wanted to click this drop down so i click here and this selector looks somewhat fine um, I'll click confirm and then I'll try to see if it works. So when I run this, you will see that it clicks function. That looks fine. Now to click the sub menu. And again, you should rename your activities. This one is a mess to look at. So F2 or rename. Always make this a best practice. You will be happy about it when you come back to your flows and your colleague will do so. We will have another click. And then we'll choose to indicate an app. Now this one has gone. If I click here that I wanted to go into the sub menu, then this one will just choose this function. So like in classic, we can do a delay. The um, default delay is five seconds. And here I can just uh, make it bigger or make it more. I will have five seconds. And then you can see I can press F2 uh, like this, or I can just click it. Now I can open up the sub menu because now I'm ready. When this is done, I have the sub menu open and I can pick the absolute value. That's how you do it in the modern design experience. So I click confirm here. The browser automation in modern also changed a bit. So again, let me just control D, comment this one out. So to use a browser, again, we will need to use the use application slash browser. Pick this one here and drag it in. So all applications and browsers must have this container around. And here you will need an indicate application to automate. Today we will automate this page. And what you will do is simply just indicate application to automate. Here it is. So now we are opening up this page or attaching to it if it's already open. What I can do here is that I use this username and password, and then I'll create a simple login sequence. So in UiPath, I'll be creating two variables. I'll have the user name, that will be a string. And over here in quotation marks, I'll put in my username. Similarly, I will have my password. This one will be a secure string. So I'll cho choose the variable type, browse for types, I will search for Secure string. Pick the one on the system security in Corelib 6.000. We'll wait a bit with entering the password because we will first need to make sure that we are in the actual right place. So what we'll do here is to have a check app state. This will just look for an element on the page that we're trying to automate. We'll pick the check app state. What this does is that we can indicate an element. If that element appears, we go over here. Otherwise, we'll go over here. And um, let me just uh, minimize this variable here. So what we want to indicate is some stable element to the page. I'll choose the login button here. I'll click confirm. So whenever we find this, we can continue with the automation. Otherwise, we will go over here. Now I want to find a type into, I'll be typing in the username. So here I'll click indicate, I'll pick the username. And this one looks fine, I'll click confirm. So in here and just type this, press control space, find the username, this will just be a standard one. 
Now I want to type in the password as well. So I find another type into. Now here I want to indicate where I want to type it in. So I choose the password here. And this one is a bit tricky. The selector looks fine. I click confirm. And now we want to use their secure password. So here, let me just first copy it. I'll copy it over to UiPath. Before we do anything here, let's go down to variables again. And we will need to initialize this password. So what you will do here is that you'll pick a new, then you'll say system dot net, then you'll say dot uh, network credential, then the username will be blank, the comma, and then you'll control V and this should be a string. So I need to put this in quotation mark again, parentheses end, and then we will need to have the secure password. This is the way to initialize your password. So if I go up here, I can use the secure. And if I go down here, control space, I will find my secure variable. Finally, let's just click login. So I'll find a click and choose the login button. That's how you use the modern activity browser activities here in UiPath. But let's see that this actually works. So we can log in here. So if I run the file, we should be able to both uh, put in the username, the password, click login, and let me just uh, verify it. Bingo. The next advanced UI path lesson is right here on the screen. It's about the object repository.